Hello, and welcome to Things We Said Today, our weekly podcast about anything and everything to do with the Beatles as a group, as solo artists, their past, their present, and this week we're going to talk about things immediately to come. I'm Alan Cozen, the author of The Beatles From the Cavern to the Rooftop, and got that something how the Beatles, I Want to Hold Your Hand, changed everything. I'm joined by my three regular co-hosts, Ken Michaels, who you know is the host of the syndicated radio show, Every Little Thing. Hello, Ken. Hello, Alan. Hi, everybody. And Steve Marinucci. If we were doing a kinks show, we would call him the last of the great steam-powered trains, but here we call him the last of the full-time Beatles reporters. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was very clever. That was that was clever, especially considering how early I got up this morning. Uh, hello. Mm-hmm. Big Kings fan, what can I tell you? Um, yeah. And Steve is here. We refer to him really as the last of the full time Beatles reporters. Uh, you can read him in access.com, that's AXS, and in Billboard, he's become effectively their Beatles desk and all sorts of other places. Um, and if you can't find them all, just follow him on Facebook, and every day he's got links to all of his things. So, hello, Steve. Hello. Hello, Alan. Hello, everyone. And last but not least, we have Al Sussman, the executive editor of Beatle Fan Magazine and the author of Changing Times, 101 Days That Shaped a Generation. Hello, Al. Hi, Alan. Hello there, everybody. Okay. So we've all been spending probably all day today and a lot of yesterday um, looking Mm -hmm. at first the trickle of information coming through and now the flood of information coming through about the Sgt. Pepper 50th anniversary set. And so we thought we would actually preempt a couple of shows that we've already recorded and talk about Pepper now because this is um, really, I I think, so exciting. Um, Anyone disagree? No, no. Not, not <laughs> I mean, I, 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 you could you could kind of see things bubbling up last night when the first information leaked. Actually, I think it was yesterday afternoon when the when the video showed up and the picture mm-hmm. and the pictures the pictures came out yesterday morning, and there was kind of like there was kind of uh, amazement and wonderment if the, if these were real. Yeah. And then when the when the when the track the track list popped up late last night. It, although it didn't have a lot of detail, it was still, you know, kind of wow. Yeah. What are we? What is this going? What is going on here? And then when the details came out this morning, it was unbelievable. It really, yeah. really was. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first thing that happened, and, and this has actually happened in, uh, in a couple of cases recently, where Amazon apparently jumped the gun a little bit, um, and before the official announcement even um, posted the pictures of the six disc set. Um, mm-hmm. the, they posted all, they had all the pictures of yeah. them and then they pulled them. And then they pulled them. But if you clicked on the thing that said no image available, you got to a page that had the place for the non image, but they left up there the video that was, I think huh. they're uh, now calling this the unpacking video um, mm-hmm. where it, mm-hmm. it just gave you a quick overview of what was going to be on this. And it began to seem clear to us, at least I think that, this isn't a fake, you know, this, this right. is, uh, mm-hmm. this is too well produced and, uh, you know, yeah. someone mm-hmm. would have had to have gone to a lot of trouble and expense just to fake this. So mm-hmm. I think, I don't know, I began accepting it as, as what the set was going to be. Uh, and then last night, oh. Amazon in Italy, of you know, had the track listing, you know, so, I mean, putting all these things together, uh, you know, and finally this morning, the actual press release came through, um, Um, which explains a lot more in a lot more detail all the information and it's um so let's start with you know just the the formats i mean there is start from the smallest to the biggest the first first there is a single cd then -hmm. there is a two cd set and I think we should we should say the single CD is going to have Giles Martin's new stereo mix, and right. the new stereo mix is a little odd because he's like he did with the tracks on the One Plus album. They're remixes, but they're remixes guided by the mono mixes of Pepper. 
Hmm. Is this how you guys well, you, all understand it? Right. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the press release here, and that's interesting because the if you you know if you've been uh, familiar with the bootlegs, there are bootleg versions out there of stereo mixes made from the mono mixes. There is some some interesting differences. I mean, you obviously hear things in a different manner on those kind of mixes than you would on the on the mono mixes and and so you know and the and the the clip that video that you were talking about you definitely can tell something is different there you definitely could hear Mm -hmm. what they've done you know so Mm -hmm. i'm sure that was intentional yeah oh yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure it was too you know and and frankly i don't mind if it is kind of based on the on the the original mono mix, because actually I uh, in certain respects I like the mono mix better, like the yeah. the you know the, the she's leaving home with the correct speed McCartney vocal and the the smoother bridge between the Sergeant Pepper reprise and a day in the life. Right, Something and like and also the um, the effects on John's voice and Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. I mean, like probably like a lot of you. I mean, I got the record when it came out and grew up with it originally in mono. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Lucy in the Sky always sounded very spacey. And then when mm-hmm. I got the stereo, it was a lot less spacey. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's leaving home. You know, is this is a question what the proper speed is? Um, because what I th- think happened i could be wrong uh, and maybe um either mark lewison or the uh ryan ryan and Kihu might have discussed this but what it sounds to me like is the one that we hear on the stereo mix is actually the sort of real key that it's in and, and speed that it went on and for the mono mix i think they sped it up a little bit you know what they call sweetening um, mm. And it sounds better that way, sped up. It doesn't, yeah. you know, in, in stereo, I, I really think it's kind of a draggy song, but mm-hmm. in, in mono, it clips along. So yeah. I, I think this has some great potential because we're going to get some of the things from the mono mix that are better than the stereo mix, but we're still going to get a stereo mix. Mm-hmm. So, and there was I have that, to. I have to say, I disagree about she's leaving home there. Yeah, I think it sounds. I think the slower speed is is more appropriate because it is a sad song. It's true. You know? It's true. It's true. I've always thought the stereo mix was the proper speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the version that you probably first heard. Right. The, the stereo version. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, uh, unfortunately that's uh, <laughs> where you differ from the three of us in that you know we 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 probably I probably all three of us are uh, our first copies were probably the mono. Yeah, right. Mine definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, anytime I heard the song on the radio, I always heard the stereo version. Yeah. So. The stereo eventually supplanted the mono as the the sort of normal one everybody heard. So we have the the mono in stereo mix as the main disc, and that's what you would get if you bought the single CD. There's also right. a two CD version and a two LP version, which mm-hmm. will have that mix, mix as disc one. Disc two will be sort of an alternate Sgt. Pepper, which is Sgt. Pepper, the songs from Sgt. Pepper in the same sequence as the album, but all with all as outtakes including the version of A Day in the Life that ends with the hummed chord. So nice. There is some question as to whether everything on the two CD set is in the Super Deluxe set. And that's kind of, apparently there's some, uh, there's, and I'm, i got to look here at the, at the track list. There's a, a, a discrepancy on disc two with Lovely Rita, Speech and Take Nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and, every, and, and I've seen... People wondering if that is on the – if they're on both sets because it's on the, the – it's listed on the two CD set, but it's not on the Super Deluxe. And I made an inquiry today, and I have not heard back, so I don't huh. know. But that's – I would I kind see it, of think, It's on CD3, Lovely Rita, Speech and Take Yeah, Nine. yeah. 
People are stupid. I swear. I, you know, and especially some of the comments that I saw online today. These people are, are they're, they're, they're absolute morons. Well, let's, hey, say, let's say that it's a lot of material to assimilate. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> right. Still, you know, like, why is he kind of out of line on there? Oh, mm. God, please. Well, oh, well, well listen. Well, the, the one I saw a lot of comments about was Carnival of Light. Right. Which yeah. I, I am not, uh, I, I, I'm glad it's not there. Yeah, yeah, me too. Well, I, I don't know. I, I really want Carnival less. of Light. And what I think that they should do is that um, when you buy the deluxe set, um, there should be a code there. And we should go like like Sir Paul has done. We should mm-hmm. be able to go online and download so, Carnival of Light in the, as a WAV file in 4896. <laughs> I, I don't, yeah. There you go. I'm, I'm not one that really wants to hear that, though. I really no, don't. No, me neither. Why not? Uh, so why are you preventing me and Ken from wanting to hear it? <laughs> well, <laughs> only be, only because I know what will happen if it gets out there. Yeah, people are going to say, oh, this is awful. This isn't, this isn't a good song. I, I, it's not even I, a I'm song. Gonna say, I'm not going to say it like that, but I'm going to just say I think social media would not be very receptive to it. And I don't no, you know, not at all. And, well, you and know, music, people still have problems with Revolution Number no. 9, so they'll just have to catch yeah. up. Okay. Yeah, anyway, whatever. okay. So <laughs> we have, you know, we're, we're still just doing the running down the formats. Um, yes. There's the the two CD, two LP, which is going to have, you know, the alternate pepper with, you know, various things on it. We we can we can get into the details later. And then finally, there is the six disc super deluxe edition, um, mm-hmm. on which disc one is going to be. The remix of Pepper, um, with you know, no, everyone was uh, you know debating whether or not Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane were going to be inserted into the track listing because the London Times said so sometime mm-hmm. last month, but that's not happening. Let's see, uh, so discs two and three are outtakes in this case arranged chronologically by the earliest recording date. And there are, let's see, 15 on disc three and, wait, different screen, different mouse, and uh, 18 on disc two. And we'll get into what those are uh, in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. CD4 is the Mono Pepper, um, remastered, not remixed, but the original Mono Pepper. That's tracks one to 13. Then there is the original mono mixes of Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane, an unreleased mono mix of A Day in the Life, previously unreleased, a version of Lucy in the Sky that was thought to have been wiped in 1967, but which they found during the research for this set. Then uh, an unreleased mono mix of She's Leaving Home, and the promo single of Penny Lane, which had the trumpet ending. So, oh, as a matter of fact, when, when, I just wanted to ask about something because um, actually going back to the second and third discs, uh, there's also the new stereo mix of Penny Lane, and what's listed is, and several times is listed here as the 2015 ser- stereo mix of Strawberry Fields Forever. Well, that means which, from the one album, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering about. Is that? Is I, that? Okay. I, I would think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're up to the final two discs in the sixth disc set, which are identical. Um, one Blu-ray, one DVD. Um, but they're going to have a new 5.1 surround mix of all of Pepper and Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields. Well, with the 2015 Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields surround sound mixes mm-hmm. and new mixes mm-hmm. of the Pepper tracks. And they're going to have high-resolution stereo mixes. So, you know. Uh, and the making of Sgt. Pepper 1992 documentary. That's nice. Yeah, yeah that, was, nice. That, was a wonderful, that was a wonderful show. Yeah. I remember that from the Disney channel. And the promo films for A Day in the Life, Strawberry Fields, and Penny Lane. And that is the complete roundup of the several versions. And um, I kind of think I'm going to – I mean, I might get them all except the <laughs> single one, the single CD one. I mean, I'm not sure if you're getting the uh, any of the others, there's any use – having that um you, for, but I, you forgot that you forgot the box has a lenticular cover and a 144 page hardback booklet oh that's yeah. right and two posters and uh 
Yeah. And the booklet will have some handwritten lyrics, handwritten recording notes. There, you could see in the video that there's a note about the editing of Strawberry Fields. Mm-hmm. Um, so lots and lots of stuff. Um, essays from all kinds of people, including our pal Jeff Slate. Yeah. Um, cool. Kevin Howlett, yep. um, a few others. And uh, so, you know, it really looks, I think, generally speaking, um, you know, as an advanced view, this really looks like an incredible set of the sort I really think that they should do and maybe will do for all the others. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing you hear about this, and it opens up the floodgates it to should. everything else they could do. And um, you're wondering, why are they starting with Sgt. Pepper? They could have done this with earlier albums, too. I think there's there if they're if they're indeed starting, if they're, you know, uh, starting with Sgt. Pepper, uh, they're doing it because, in fact, in, in 1987, when the first uh, Beatles CDs came out, Sgt. Pepper was the was the only one that had its own, well, the first one, that had its own separate release date. It was also the only one that had a, uh, had a new booklet, mm-hmm. and it sounded definitely better than the first, uh, the first batch. The British uh, one had season. a slipcase, even. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And plus, also, it was released on the, the, actual, the actual anniversary. So, so that they could say. It was kind of like yeah. the, the centerpiece it was. of the, the original CDs. Mm-hmm. And with the, the subsequent ones, with the White Album and Magical Mystery Tour and, uh, um, Abbey, Road. and Abbey Road and all, they went back to the bargain basement uh, yeah. packaging that they had done with the earlier ones. Yeah. So, so I have a feeling this may just be the only one that's going to get this kind of treatment. Mm. Maybe it I depends would, I, on the reception, I, you know. Because, because you know, it's – the the fact of the matter is Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is the most important album in the history of popular music. It has a very unique place. And so I think I think they realize that and and realized it thirty years ago. And so they're giving it its more in this in this case, they're giving it more than its proper due. Well, you know, with the original CDs, it's not just that it was the centerpiece. It it was, you know, when I when I interviewed George Martin when the first batch came out, Mm -hmm. and he was complaining that um, you know they had given the first four to him in stereo and said, "What a wonderful job we've done, haven't we?" And he said, "No, (laughs) I, I I think these should be mono, and he and and I think I should." Go look at all of these and redo them. And they said, "Well, uh, if you want, we can we can throw out the first in four in mono, but we don't have time to let you remix those because we have a schedule which is entirely mm. predicated on Sergeant Pepper coming out on June first, so that we can say it was twenty years ago today yeah. in our ad campaign." Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, here you had actually that whole original CD program kind of built around the need to be able to quote a Beatles line in the ad, you know. So, uh, and, and, and George Martin was, you know, not that happy about that, but he, I think he understood that it, okay, this is the way it has to be. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they'll do others. I mean, where the problem is, of course, we are at the end of the physical media w- world and the possibility too, of, yeah. you know, continuing putting out boxes like this. Um, I, I kind of would mm-hmm. think that that this would be a seller, but I mean, who knows, you know. You know, probably what they do is they sit in Apple and, and when they – put together an idea like this, the first question they ask is, okay, what can we possibly do that will get Alan Cozen to stop complaining about everything we do? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, you know, they, they may finally have hit upon it. I think so. so yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, I mean, really, uh, this addresses, you know, when people say, oh, well, they're not, they don't care about the collector and all that. This, the deluxe box addresses the collector you know they're giving us two cds of outtakes and uh now there's some questions of course i mean some of these outtakes are things we had on the anthology and so the question is are we going to get the same versions as on the anthology or is giles going to go back and redo them and in particular 
the one I'm interested in is take one of strawberry fields because <laughs> on the anthology, they stripped away that gorgeous because like backing vocal section, those beautiful harmonies. They just aren't on the anthology version. And we know that Giles likes those because he did use them in love. Yeah. So I'm sort of hoping he remixes that and puts those vocals back in there. Mm -hmm. um, and he may do some remixes of the other things we know from Anthology too, which would mean that we have yet more versions of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is well, fine with me. I, I got to hope that they, number one, they don't do the, the piecemeal thing that they did with the Anthology where they, you know, cut everything and cut things and threw them together and, and, you know, the way they they did those, uh, you know, those new outtakes for Anthology, yeah. you know. Like there were some Ken that, you know, the cross-faded ones, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like... Um, Good Night. Good Night, yeah. Uh, I think Yes It Is, maybe. Yeah, Good Yes It Is. Mm -hmm. Yes It Is is yeah. the one I remember the best yeah. that I really mm -hmm. couldn't stand. I, I, was, I was really disappointed with that. But what about really. the Pepper ones? I mean the same thing. The the, the I, I, get, I hate to use the word butchering, but the butchering of those outtakes was probably one of the most distressing things about the anthology. You know mm -hmm. that they didn't use the whole. They didn't do this. Do what the bootleggers did. That was kind of disappointing. <laughs> there was one point I was going to make. You were talking about whether they'd continue to do this. Number one, you notice they did not do this with Revolver. Right. Right. And, so and I think that sends a very clear message that they have a real love for Pepper. I mean, we've always known they have they have had. And I think the only other album we'd ever get this for, like this treatment of would be Abbey Road. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't. I, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know about that. I mean, when you I, say they, do you mean Paul and Ringo, <laughs> or or uh, the record company Apple? Who? Probably, I mean Apple. I mean it would it would have to be Apple because assuming we don't know if Paul and Ringo will be around when you know when that anniversary comes around, when the fiftieth comes around. You know, well, you obviously, could... obviously Paul is so extremely proud of Sgt. Pepper, but you know if you, if you listen to comments from John and from George, you know John mm -hmm. uh, liked other albums so much more than Sgt. Pepper and thought that. You know, there wasn't really a concept album as it's been portrayed to be. Just that you have Sgt. Pepper at the beginning and Sgt. Pepper at the end with A Day in the Life. And he, he really downplayed Sgt. Pepper. You know, between John and even George, I think that they've, they've kind of said that the middle period, that Rubber Soul Revolver period, was their favorite. So, I, well, uh, you know, I, I guess between Paul and Ringo, even Ringo, you know, would, would comment about Sgt. Pepper that, there was a moment he was just playing chess, like he wasn't feeling like he was a you know a member of the band during the album. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. So uh, definitely with Paul, Paul's so extremely proud of Sgt. Pepper yeah. as he should. But I don't know if I would say in general, Apple, all four parties would say Sgt. Pepper has to be the most important. The, you know, well, they didn't. They didn't do this with any. I mean, we've passed fiftieth anniversaries for several for a number of the yeah. albums, now, and this is the first one they've done. And, no, and also, of course, nothing comes out without, you know, the unanimous vote. You know, we, right. we know that, un, right. you know, right. for you know, let it be and, and all of that. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I, I really think I really I really think that anybody expecting this kind of treatment for more albums is going to be probably yeah. disappointed because so. number one, number one, the cost factor and number two, even though. The enthusiasm, I mean, the online buzz on this thing that I've seen since last night has been astounding. Yeah. People are absolutely freaking out. And we're talking about people who normally grouse about everything. Mm. They are they are very pleased with this. Very mm -hmm. pleased. Yeah. You know, I mean I've still I have seen a couple of snide comments in certain places, but most people are very, very happy with this. And uh, but there's a lot of reasons why it's just not going to happen for every album. It's just, it just won't. I yeah, wish I could. I, mm. Number one, uh, you'd have to get people to buy it, you know, spend $150. That's yeah. not, not, not going to happen. I mean, we, we just got through talking about the, you know, the future of the, of the McCartney uh, archive collections 
Yeah. And thinking that, uh, you know, that after maybe another, you know, after they get through the the 70s Wings albums, that might be that might be it, depending mm-hmm. on uh, if, if they even get that the, far. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Depending on the sales for, uh, you know, for Flowers in the Dirt. You know, yeah. they may, well, that's something we just don't know. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're just well, guessing it at this point. But. You know, you're saying that the the response to this has been astounding. I guarantee you, if something similar like this, or even if it was a two CD package, was put out on Revolver or Rubber Soul, yeah, you know, or anything later, I bet you those Beatle fans would be thrilled to pieces. Oh, of course, yeah. So you know, sure. you shouldn't just limit it to Sgt. Pepper. Is all that I'm saying. Well, yeah. I, I I still I still take the tack. That Sergeant Pepper is a is a unique. I mean, Sergeant Pepper is the release of Sergeant Pepper on June first and second, nineteen sixty seven, was an event with mm-hmm. a capital E. I mean, you know, Bruce Spizer has a book coming out, and the right. core portion of that book is reminiscences by fans, both well known and you know, and just uh, you know, ordinary fans of mm-hmm. their first listen. To Sergeant Pepper, most of them from you know from June of '67. Some later on, but yeah. most of them from uh, from June 1st and 2nd of 1967. You know, it's and it's it's probably the first time. You know, there are a lot. Those of us who grew up in the '60s, there are a lot of events from the '60s where we can remember where we were and what we were doing when certain things happened. And our first listen to Sergeant Pepper is one of them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and it's uh, and and that doesn't really doesn't really exist with uh, with a lot of the other a lot of the other albums mm-hmm. because it was it was very unique and again it's the most important album in the history of popular music so it's it has a very unique place in history mm-hmm. so okay. I think well to counter your your point there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That was then. This is now. There are a right. lot of people today that look at Sgt. Pepper, even though they admire the work and they think it was a great body of work as being of its time and sure. being dated. You know, well, and they prefer they prefer Revolver or the White Album or Abbey Road. There's nothing right. wrong with feeling that way. There's no right. doubt the importance of this album. I'm yes. just saying that I think that it would be wrong not to do similar treatments to some of the other Beatles' work. You might argue about the earlier stuff, but certainly once you're getting into more interesting music, uh, more creative music from Rubber Soul on, maybe they could yeah. do something like that. I think they definitely should, and um, uh, even with the early music. I mean, with the early music, you have the benefit of that being, you know, two track and early four track recording where there really are more actual outtakes than there are at this point. I mean, one of the problems that they ran into in the anthology with the stuff from Pepper on and why I think they did a lot of editing of different takes is that generally speaking, the way they recorded at that point was, you know, multi-tracking. And if they didn't like something, they wiped it. And, and so there, you know, in some cases aren't, outtakes the way there are on Please Please Me. And so with those, I mean, you have, with the early albums, you at least have a natural way of, um, you know, filling out discs with outtakes. Plus, um, they really would benefit from remixes now. And, um, you know, I think I, I also, yeah, I, I, I understand completely the argument that Al is making about this being the most important pop album of all time. Um, There are people who argue it, but fine. We're looking back as a whole at what really is the most important pop music catalog of all time. And I I kind of think, I kind of think that every single one of their albums deserves a, uh, this kind of treatment. And and I wish they had been doing it all along. Um, It could be that, Within that, Pepper gets, you know, maybe more discs than some of the others and, uh, you know, more deluxe treat, whatever. But I, I, I really kind of think that it would have made sense for them to have been doing this all along. And now they can go back and do it. I mean, there are other anniversaries coming up. or uh, I, I think a lot of these things as well are a little experimental. You know, I think Giles doing all of those remixes on 
the one or one plus project was in mm. a certain way testing the water, you know, how how will people react to remixes? And I kind of think that generally speaking, while there was some carping here and there, I think they were generally well received. And so now we see, okay, you know, here it is a year and a half later and and he's been given the green light to remix Pepper. And maybe if this goes well, he'll be given the green light to remix them all. So... Who knows? You know, I, th- I, I think there, there may be more to come. Back to the um, outtakes aspect. Um, you know, the anthology had 35 minutes worth of Pepper era outtakes, and that includes only a Northern song, which this doesn't. So let's say 31, 32 minutes of this material. Just looking at the list, I, I, I haven't compared all the take numbers of the anthology things, but just offhand, I see that for Within You, Without You, they give take one Indian instruments only, and then a take of George coaching the musicians. On anthology, of course, what we had was the Western instrument orchestra, right? Mm. Um, so that won't be repeated here, seemingly, right? Mm-hmm. So that's something else. Um, and uh, here we're getting 100 minutes of outtakes versus the 35 on anthology so there's i think going to be a lot of stuff even those of us who are lunatic bootleg collectors haven't heard (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) do you know there's one one thing i noticed by the way i don't know if anybody any of you else any of you other guys noticed it there's no digital for this it's all c it's all physical disc all cd there are they did not announce Hmm. digital downloads and i'm looking on iTunes right now, and I don't see a listing for it. That doesn't mean it won't be there, but mm. as of today, there's been no mention of digital downloads for this thing. Yeah, I so, bet they will, they, they will, of course, you know, but... Um, you, would think, you, would think, you would think yeah. so. You would think so. And in fact, yeah, you'll probably have to buy the iTunes version to get Carnival of Light and a few outtakes if it's only a northern song. <laughs> there you, which there is... you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, boy. So that'll save you some money, Steve. <laughs> yeah, really. Really. So my main question here is what is really repeated from what's on the Beatles anthology that's on here? Because I'm seeing that being for the benefit of Mr. Kite, they're saying take seven Mm -hmm. and take seven is on the Beatles anthology. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised uh, if there were a couple of repeats. Yeah, that's very possible. Yeah, I think there are. Um, Just don't know which offhand. I think possibly the take six of Penny Lane might have been the one. Was that the one on the anthology? I'm not sure. This one says instrumental. I, yeah, I don't have my I don't have my, yeah, I don't have my copy, copy mm. right handy. But the one the one thing that the 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 deluxe the two CD listing says is complete early takes complete. Right. Which you know that there's I think the big difference and uh, mm. you know so that will be very nice. That yeah. I mean, what can we say here? I mean, this thing is just amazing. I mean, yeah. at least, you know, what we're looking at, what we think we're looking at is, is absolutely astounding. So, t- oh, yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, I've, I've got the anthology stuff here. Um, mm-hmm. So I can read these and you can compare them with right. the list on the um, – Go ahead. Press release. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the Strawberry Fields demo sequence is not on the new one. And that's mm-hmm. on the anthology. Strawberry Fields take one is – but we have the question about whether it will be a new mix with the vocals reinserted. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it says uh, Strawberry Fields take seven and edit piece. And on the new list, they just say take seven. They don't say anything about right. edit piece. Um, Penny Lane just says alternate mix. Um, a Day in the Life doesn't seem to give the take number. I think that might have been melding of several different takes, right? I think so, yeah. Good morning, good it's- morning, take eight. Uh, take eight is the one that's on on here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Only a Northern Song doesn't give a take, but I believe it had a different vocal verse than the released version. Anyway, it's not on here. Right, so, it's not on here. Uh, right, benef- benefit of Mr. Kite, it says takes one and two and takes seven. And then it's take four on this one. Okay. And, and Yeah, okay. No, wait a minute. I thought it said seven there. Wait a minute. Yeah, take four, or at least that's in the the press release. Yeah, but being for the benefit of Mr. Kite, Take 7 is in the anthology. Oh, yeah. 
So it's on both. It's on yeah. that and here. Yeah. Yeah. So right, being for the benefits. Um, right. Take four and take seven. So take four will be new to us. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. It just says alternate mix. Right, and that's okay. Take one. So, take one, take one is, uh, speech at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Within you, without you, is the orchestral instrumental, which isn't on the new one. And then Sergeant Pepper reprise. I don't have a, a notation for what take or anything. So, just take uh, five mm. right. on the anthology. Take, on the anthology. Okay. Take, take five. eight is take eight yeah. is on is on the new one. Okay. So really, we're getting um, very few repeats. I think. Mm-hmm. A few, but not many. Cool. Yeah, I think this is it. <laughs> Alan's happy. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Well, this is, I you know I, I I would have thought that we probably would have gotten nothing more than you know a single CD with you know with a new the new mix and Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields. Mm-hmm. I I would have been very surprised with anything beyond that. To get this. And, and especially to go the, frankly, the McCartney route and go with these, you know, these various different versions of it, including this Mondo box, which is, in fact, bigger than any of the uh, of the McCartney uh, boxes, is very, very surprising. In fact, I mean, it's basically got anything that I would have wanted in a Sgt. Pepper box except maybe, you know, the few, the handful of songs that they recorded during the Sgt. Pepper sessions that, you know, were later released on the Yellow Submarine uh, soundtrack and then All You Need Is Love and uh, uh, Baby, You're a Rich Man. Yeah. And, you know, we have those anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Right. I mean, All You Need Is Love, you could argue, really is post pepper sessions and the, the yeah the but only it's so it's the so only song song to, is yeah you know, the only uh, the only actual song not counting carnival of light from the sessions that's missing here is only a northern song and and i, w- I would have liked to have mm-hmm. heard that on here too in the same way that strawberry fields and penny lane are on here but you know it's not the worst thing in the world that it's not no, it's, i i, no. I would have i would have argued to put it on if um if they had asked, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but and I would work uh, for carnival of light too, but maybe it'd be a download. So. I don't see how anyone can find anything to complain about here. The only thing when I was envisioning what they might do, and this was like a pipe dream of mine was to have something like, um, stripped down. What was done with double fantasy only apply to Sergeant pepper and remove a lot of the, the string sections and the Indian instruments and just uh, have the band alone. Because one of my absolute favorite things that was on the Beatles anthology was the recording of Good Morning, Good Morning without Mm. all the animal sound effects. And it was just the band Mm. and nothing Mm. else. And you got to hear the amazing drumming that Ringo had on that song. So to do something like that with Sgt. Pepper, if you could do it, I mean, there are songs like She's Leaving Home, which was just John and Paul's vocals and uh, an orchestra, or was it It was an orchestra or a quartet and harp. So if you remove that, then you just have John and Paul's vocals. Mm-hmm. Or Within You, Without You, if you took away the Indian instruments and uh, the have- Western, in- then you just have George's vocal. <laughs> That's know? all you'd have, yeah. So, <laughs> but- but you could do something with many of the tracks there where it's stripped down so that it's even more raw and basic. And it would be fascinating that way to listen to it, to make a and comparison actually, of, of mm-hmm. what it was like in the beginning to what it eventually became. Mm-hmm. And actually, I think people have done that with the, the, you know, the rock band uh, mixes. Mm. You know, because if I remember correctly, I think there is a, a rock band Sgt. Pepper. There is. Yeah, yeah. there is. There right. is. And so it's the same. The same. You, know, you can do that with with those with those mixes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we have that. Plus, we have those. You know, the four track for the for those four songs that uh, you know, Pepper with a little help. She's leaving home in a day in the life. Um, so we we already have the means to re- do our own remixes if we want. Um, mm-hmm. So. And who oh, knows? and there's one other little uh, one other little thing hmm. uh, on Record Store Day. 
uh, April 22nd, um, there's going to be released a 45 of Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields. Now, I don't know whether it's the the new mixes or not, but it's it will be a you know, a 45. Yeah, there was there, there were no details in the in the press yeah, release on that. Of, um, yeah, of course. With since the I picture still sleeve. Have, since I still have my copy from 1967, I don't need it. Yeah, that's true. You, 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 you do not. Um, interesting note: uh, the Rolling Stone story on the Sgt. Pepper uh, anniversary uses a magical mystery tour picture. Oh, I know, and some <laughs> idiot uh, on, um, on the page Paris. of uh, Ken's uh, former cohorts said, "Hey, why, why are they using a magical mystery tour picture? Who cares?" Oh, God, people need to, you know, A, grow up, and B, go out and get some fresh air. <laughs> I think it's funny, actually, but that's me. Um, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, Miss Magical Mystery Tour is not a world apart from Sergeant Pepper. It's yeah. A, it's a few no, months not, later, you know? Yeah. Right. They look the same. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. much yeah. Pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. In fact, actually, the song, the title song, actually was recorded. During the the sessions for Sergeant Pepper, I think the date was it was sometime in April. So okay, uh, I'll check. I'll check the Lewison book. Mm. Anywho, I guess we give this all a, a big uh, super plus. Huh? Oh, absolutely! This is much, much more than I would have than I would have expected. Absolutely, you gotta, you gotta wonder where the idea to or where the you know. How this developed, you know, with with the other pr- reissue projects that we've talked about that we haven't been as happy with, why this one went the way it did? Well, it's possible that the McCartney series has been, you know, considering that, uh, you know, one of the votes at Apple is indeed the same guy. Um, I think probably the McCartney series may have uh, may have been a factor. Hmm. I wouldn't be at all surprised. You know. You know- there's no topic we have discussed more on this show than what Apple should do right. and what they haven't been doing. Yeah. And we, we've talked about that so many times. And how many times have we said they have never thought about the hardcore fan? Mm-hmm. And yet at the same time, when we take a look at certain releases that we think would do really well, that would cater a lot to the hardcore fan, they haven't been. So, I mean, something like the Beatles One Plus, and I know we've talked about this a lot, but Mm -hmm. I immediately thought, oh, that's going to explode. You know, all the videos and everything, and it didn't. You know, so I don't know. And yet, when I remember the comments that I think Alan made about something Paul had said, maybe it was when you were interviewing him, Alan, but Paul was always worried about when Alternate Takes came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Beatles songs and young fans would buy it and be confused as to whether or not those are the real versions. Right. And yet, this comes out. So, mm-hmm. but then again, who's going to buy this? Who's going to buy the super deluxe? It's going to be the hardcore fan that knows all this stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. So, and well, yet the that... Beatles, the Beatles also prevented the uh, bootleg series coming out of each year after 1963. So, mm-hmm. if they were against that. And yet they're doing this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, sometimes it doesn't make any sense. That's an interesting point. I wouldn't have. Yeah, I, yeah that's. Well, wild. of course, there. You know, this is a four-pronged release. You know, for the you know for the casual fan, there is simply the single CD. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. You know. mm. And it's and the mix the new mix will not replace the old one because they they have the still have the 2009 remaster and. That's the official mix. This is this new mix is not the official mix anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, it does not become the official mix. But I think it's interesting that the official mix is not included in in the set. And you could argue that yeah. both ways. I mean, it could be that anybody who would buy this set absolutely already has at least one copy of the official right. mix. I, I was, if you probably saw on Facebook I, the other day, I went through and, and counted. I've got at least twenty one copies of the official. Mm-hmm. Mix. I mean, that includes mono ones too. Includes picture disc. Mm-hmm. And includes a cassette. And includes an iTunes download. Well, that's an official release, you know. So mm-hmm. um, the only you thing don't, is, you don't you don't have the uh, you don't have the A track. Do I you? don't have the A track or the open reel. 
And uh, Bill well, King and I were. You, Bill King is. Yeah. Bill King was saying that. Uh, <laughs> I thought. I thought um, what he said. I have located them both on on eBay. The the problem is, of course, if I if I get the A track and the open reel, I will then have to get them for the entire series. Um, <laughs> whereas at the moment, I could say that I'm really only collecting vinyl and CDs, and that the iTunes and the cassette that I have are sort of outliers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, right. So I've got like 21 of them and, and this is going to make, um, I guess it's going to bring it up to 25, but still, I, I mean, I, I mean, for the sake of, of completeness in a way you kind of think, okay, we're getting the original mono mix. We're getting all these mm-hmm. other mixes and things. We, maybe, maybe we should have had the stereo mix in here somewhere. Um, but I'm not too concerned about that yeah i mean the the problem is that if if they had put the original stereo mix on in there would have been that that many fewer outtakes yeah also though um and and i imagine that this is a matter of it being much easier to market and manufacture but discs five and six are identical one's blu-ray one's dvd and mm-hmm. I think maybe they could have had a Blu-ray version and a DVD version mm-hmm. and, and had either a different disc six or just made it five discs. Yeah, I, I, th- I wondered about that, too, actually. I uh, wondered why they did that. Probably because it's that- easier to stock, you know, it's easier to just have a unified package, right? you know. Than to have to Manu- order Blu-ray and order DVD. also there right. you know, also so there's still a lot of people that only have DVD players that don't have Blu-ray players right so right. if they bought the DVD version you know look everything until now has come out separately as a DVD or a Blu-ray like uh, the movie uh, the, the mm-hmm. tour movie and the uh, one plus one plus you could get that either way. So here they're giving you both. Um, and I think it's mainly in order to not have to double stock, you know, the way, the way the industry was with mono and stereo, you know, and actually like, I think that's a, a trend now because for instance, the, uh, for people who were baseball fans, the 2016 world series, uh, film, uh, when that was released in December, that was released in a package with a you know with one disc for Blu-ray, one disc for DVD. Yeah, so I, I think, well, that, that I think happened, Star Wars Rogue One is that way too, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. I, we just picked it up yesterday, and yeah, it is. There's a lot of a lot of movies coming. Um, some of them you can you can get them. You know, you can still get the single DVDs, and they're cheaper. But there are a lot of movies now that have uh, dual packages, and also include the ultraviolet streaming version. So. They, they do that now. And we shouldn't neglect the uh, the fact that the making of Sgt. Pepper is is on here because that's – I think that's an inspired choice because at that – you know, when that was made, obviously, George Harrison was still alive. Mm-hmm. Right. Sir George and Martin so is George was, Martin. George, George was still Martin. alive. And Paul and Ringo's memories were probably a little – maybe a little sharper than they are uh, than they are now. Mm-hmm. So and 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 it was and plus it was also very very well done. I'm assuming that it'll be the full version and not the sanitized one that Disney that Disney ran. Right. Yeah. That's what that's what people were suggesting yesterday. They were hoping that the UK version is the one we get. Mm, so, I, I have a feeling it probably is. Yeah. I would hope so. Just the fact that it never came out commercially. Yeah. Makes it even more appealing. Yeah. And it, it hasn't been televised all that much. Right. No. Here. So, no. you know, it's a welcome addition here. The audio was bootlegged, but the audio was bootlegged in mono. And the and that will be another thing because it was originally in stereo because I remember hearing it on the Disney Channel in stereo. And um, I remember when the bootlegger put out the double disc of the, the soundtrack, it was only mono. It was like I, I wondered about that. I wondered why they did that. But now you'll get to hear that in stereo. Mm-hmm. So, and and if you remember, there was that whole segment in there with uh, with George Martin at the at the board at Abbey mm-hmm. Road, mm-hmm. and going through you know you know taking each of the tracks since the since this incredible album was recorded on four tracks, which is <laughs> something that I always 
emphasize, which was, an, I mean, an absolute miracle, given what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, going through the, all the different tracks and showing how uh, how these songs were constructed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's uh, amazing. Wasn't that the first time we saw anything like that with Beatles music? Yeah, uh, George first Martin time, was first one. I, first one I saw. Yeah, that was fascinating. Yeah, to see them at the mixing board and to play with the faders and to isolate certain tracks and mm-hmm. that was just mm-hmm. wonderful. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that was three yeah. years before the anthology where he did a bit yeah. of that too. But um, yeah, that was kind of that was kind of the experiment for that whole thing to see if people would go for it, and they did, and that's what led to. The you know a lot of the other things so the Yellow Submarine soundtrack who came after that you know I think it partially because of that so and even and even right up to date things like so, uh, sound breaking mm-hmm. 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 yeah I mean with the Yellow Submarine song track was also the first we heard yes. that they had gone back to all of the four track pre bounce down masters and mm-hmm. had synced them all up on multi track digital so that all of the tracks of Sgt. Pepper were available for remixing without being locked into what happened when they bounced them down, you know, because once they once they combined, say, the the rhythm section and a couple of other tracks move them to a single track on another four track tape so that they could add more instruments um that original mix of those the rhythm section etc i mean that's locked in you can't reconsider Mm -hmm. it but now you know they've they've gone back they've got all of the original tapes from before the 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 mix downs and um and so the entire album can be remixed as if it was done on a 16 track you know Mm -hmm. Um, and that's that, amazing. Yeah, that's and so, so amazing. And so that means that you know the generation loss that was inherent in the original Sgt. Pepper isn't going to be in the remix. You know, we're going to be getting a mix of basically first generation sound on every single instrument. So, and from what Ringo said in uh, you know there was this tweet from I think was it Keith Allison mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. over the weekend that uh, they. Keith Allison tweeted about uh, being at Ringo's house when the package came and listening to it and hearing the the drums and bass were a bit louder than they had been, more present, which, of course, we also heard on the One Plus album. And I think, you know, if you're if you're being cynical, you could say, well, isn't it funny that the two living Beatles happen to be more in focus now? Um, but they were always complaining about lack of bass and drums on vinyl pressings back in the 60s. Yeah. And, and so I think mm-hmm. they're now getting their wish, you know, um, being able to redo it in, in this way. And still, the original mix is still available. Still available. You know, so yeah, still, for those yeah, that's not, that's not, yeah. That's not, yeah, that's not going anywhere. Right. Yeah. I mean, and apart from the new mix, I'm going to be interested in hearing the 5.1 surround, you know? Um, yeah. I hope, he, I hope he does a bit more with it than he did in the um, One Plus mixes, which were still mostly – it's mostly stereo with a little bit of ambience in the back, if I recall correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think with Pepper, there's an opportunity. I mean, we're talking about psychedelia here. You kind of want stuff swirling all around you. So, mm. or something. Yeah. Depends on the track, of course, but, you know. Right. Kind of want to be in the middle of all those instruments on Within You Without You. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so. True. Yeah, for for those of us who have five point one uh, systems, mm. Mm. which is not which is not all of us. So I think Alan, I think Alan, you should have a listening party at your house. <laughs> okay. Yeah, really. Five point one. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll all come up to Wayne, uh, Maine, and. Uh, well, actually, I know I know a guy who has a recording studio here who did a listening party with uh, with the One Plus album. Maybe he'll do another one with this. That would be. That would be mm-hmm. nice because it's like right in a studio, really great speakers, um, and uh, and you get to know all of the local Beatles guys too, which is kind of fun. Mm. So, mm. Yeah, some of them are composition professors. I mean, it's very funny. Mm. 
So, okay, you know, uh, I, I enjoyed having a look at all this stuff. It's really been sort of a, a, a day, day and a half of, of dealing with all this, and it was uh, uh, fun talking to you guys about it. I think we're all eagerly anticipating it and uh, knowing that it's like a month and a half away. I'm not sure quite how we'll get through that, but we will. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, actually, that's another that's another little point is that it's this is going to be almost like a miniature version of the wait we had for the 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 actual album. Yeah, which was this torturous wait that we had because uh, you know because of the fact that there had been it had been ten months since the last Beatles album, which in those days was uh, was an eternity. Mm-hmm. Right. And especially having gotten the you know the appetizer of Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields, right? It made it made the wait that much more uh, torturous. So this will be uh, kind of like a uh, you know a mini version of that. And for some <laughs> of us, we had a, a listener to a day in the life when an acetate got out and got onto New York radio stations. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was quick, quickly suppressed, but uh, yes, very quickly suppressed. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, we should mention that the release date is May 26th, not June 1st or June 2nd, the actual release date. No idea why they've done that. Anyone have any ideas? Uh, I I think it's because Friday is now the standard... The standard release date, uh, you know, and never, and never the twain shall meet, you know. Whereas in, I guess, twenty years ago or thirty years ago, they did make it, you know, an exception yeah. and released it on on June on June first and mm-hmm. June second. And also, they this way they have it out before the anniversary rather than after. So yeah, I think that's right. the reason. Okay, so we'll wrap this up for this week, and um, next week and the week after, we will be talking about the new Flowers in the Dirt reissue. Um, We're just awash in deluxe reissues these days. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's keep it coming. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So we need if, more. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So if you want to write to us, um, you can contact us at things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. You could follow us on Twitter at at things we said fab. We have a Facebook page which is things we said today Beatles radio fans. Oh. All of us have our own Facebook pages under our names, and mine also under Alan Cozen Remixed. And beyond that, uh, Steve, where can people find your work? Uh, Billboard and Access.com and soon uh, somewhere else where where, um, I will uh, hopefully have a story in uh, Goldmine pretty soon. Okay. That's right, yeah. And you also have your Beatles news page, right? I have my Beatles news insider blog, yes. Okay. Um, And Ken, what have you got coming up? Well, you can always reach me at my email address, which is everylittlething at att.net. Then there's my website, kenmichaelsradio.com. And speaking of flowers in the dirt, I do have copies to give away of the special edition of flowers. And you have a choice of either getting the CD or the vinyl. And that's one of nine amazing prizes on my Beatles trivia and games page. Check that out. You'll be surprised at all the great stuff that's available there that you could win. Everything from the eight days a week Blu-ray. I still have one copy left of the Beatles One Plus, Pure McCartney, all kinds of great releases on there. And um, I want to just make sure that um, that I do say that I will be appearing on a really great show, Ghosties Vintage Pop and Rock Shop, which is on WFDU. That's Fairleigh Dickinson University's radio station this Sunday, April 9th at 2 p.m. And uh, I'll be talking about my 35th anniversary doing my Beatles radio programs. And uh, I'm pretty sure we, we talk about things we said today, the show, during the program. So if you can, give it a listen. It's this Sunday on WFDU.FM at 2 p.m. And that's Eastern Standard Time. So, uh, yeah. And Ghosty is a, an incredible interviewer. I had a blast being on his show. So if you can, check that out. Okay, so for Ken Michaels, Steve Marinucci, and Al Sussman, I'm Alan Cozen saying thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Mm